Hello everybody, welcome back. Today, well I haven't really planned the fashion and the book particularly well, so we have a massive colour clash between Lauren Groff's, the cover of Lauren Groff's Fantastic Florida and my very bright pink top. But never mind, actually no, maybe it works well. I'm going to roll with it. Okay, so Florida from Lauren Groff. Now, Lauren Groff is most uh, well known for her novel Fates and Furies, which Barack Obama, I think, put down as his best book favorite book of 2015. Now, this is where I have to admit, I've never read Fates and Furies. I know, terrible. I'm actually quite embarrassed by that, but there's, like with all of us, there's always gaps in our reading. However, Lauren Groff's reputation is such that I was desperate to read this collection of short stories that Lauren has got being published next month in June and perfectly timed for the holiday season and a lovely bright cover. But there is darkness on these pages and I was thrilled by this collection of short stories that, yeah, Florida is a unifying theme, but it's ultimately an exploration of the darkness in the human soul and some very unsettling moments. So Florida is the universal thing. So basically these characters are largely set in Florida or they're from Florida. So we have a couple of short stories where some people from Florida are overseas, whether they're in Paris, whether they're in Salvador. And it's just looking at that adjustment to communities and culture that is so different from their own and the alienation of not being able to get what you need or understand people's intentions but also understanding that ever internal dynamic between men and women when the situations are dangerous and how not even any kind of language or cultural difference can ever make a woman feel secure when she knows that she's in danger which is fascinating the scenes set in florida are also a scene stories set in florida are dark i mean there's everything from a woman who goes on a uh, walk around her Florida neighborhood whenever she's really angry or just wants a break from her family, uh, her kids or her husband, whatever, and just what she sees, what she experiences. There's, there's a sort of unsettling that this is not a neighborhood at peace. This is not a neighborhood that's calm. This is where there's always something unsaid, unspoken, unseen behind every corner, behind every pair of curtains. There's a very disturbing short story about two young girls who are abandoned by their carefree mother deep in the uh, Everglades, deep in the in forests and woods, and they become feral and it, just amazing. And then there's another short story that's obsessed with snakes, the, the snakes that you find around Florida and just how they haunt people's dreams. I mean, it is, I, I was fascinated by just how creative and Lauren's vocabulary, description, pastures, her sentences are so rich. She can do so much in just a short, a short space of time. There's this wonderful section where she watches a heron uh, kill a fish and she sort of brings that back to the Iliad and it's this sort of unifying theme of darkness throughout literature over the years and that's just in a random short story. Uh, this is an amazing book. Uh, for those who are fans of Lauren Groff, you, this may be exactly like Fates and Furies. I can't tell you because I haven't read it. However, I was absolutely blown away by this. And again, for a collection of short stories, great for summer, great for something if you just want to stick in the bag. But this is really for those who are not looking to be entertained on the superficial. For these are short stories that are, can be quite long actually, some of them are about 30, 40 pages, but really draw you in. They are for people who want just snapshots of being there, of having their reality disturbed, of having their vision distorted, of taking things they think they see and then just putting them off kilter. Florida is an exceptional piece of writing and it really, it would be patronizing to say this sort of looks at the dark underbelly of a state because it's really just a collection of Lauren's home state. So I think that's why she's drawn it from them. Instead, it is more just sort of the thread of human discomfort and the unsettling elements of the communities we walk around and people around us who we don't speak to and just the lives that left untold that we don't hear about and taking that not in a joyous way, but taking that in a way of this is unsettling to us and there is something disturbing amongst us 
and there's a real power to these short stories. They, they do last with you, and there's also a short story collection that I'm gonna go back to because, like I said, Lauren's vocabulary is so dense and so rich that I just want to take this all in. It's not a short story collection you can necessarily read quite quickly, not like a skim page it's just really intense uh, I was blown away so Florida is being published in June and I'm sure it's going to be another bestseller for this much celebrated writer and so like me if you haven't known her work before this is an excellent one to start off with Florida by Lauren Groff <laughs>